Howdy folks, welcome back. Let's continue on our quest system. So now we're going to be setting up these little notifiers that lets you know that whether they have a quest for you or not. So the one on the left has a quest for me, the one on the right does, but it's locked right now. But we'll set it up to where when we accept a quest, it turns to a question mark, and if we complete the quest, but they have more, it goes back to an exclamation point. And now this one's unlocked, so I can accept that one. So, let's jump on over into our project. Now, the first thing that I need to do is in, or that we need to do, is in the quest info structure variable, down here at the bottom where we set the prerequisite to um, the quest list enumerator, we need to change it from single to array, just in case you want it to, them to have done three or four or more quests in order to unlock, then, um, we can do that. Now once that's done, where am I? Oh, once that's done, let's go inside the quest giver blueprint. Now this is our interact. We don't need to mess with that right now, but over here I'm gonna get some room and add a begin play node. I'm gonna add a sequence here because there's two things I want it to do. So the very first thing is I want to set the saved quests variable that we haven't used yet to our current quest list. So on begin play we grab whatever quests we assigned in the editor and then it will set to this saved list. I'm going to grab these, move them way up. Now the next thing we need to do is check all of these quests. So I'm going to do a for each loop because I want to check every single one of them and see if they have any prerequisites. So to do that, we are going to get the data table, oops, get the data table row for our quest info, and we'll use our the array element enum to string, and then string to text right there. So that way it'll analyze each quest inside of here and be able to get the quest info from our data table. Then we want to break that open. All we need is the prerequisite, so I'm going to uncheck all of these except that one. Now, on the row found, I'm going to Cast to my player blueprint. And I get the player character for the object, just like always. I'm going to get the completed quests Then I want to do a for each loop off of this. Oh no, off the completed quest. So a for each loop. Let me double check my notes. I'm pretty sure I'm remembering this right, but uh, I've been known to get it wrong. Alright, so that's compare. That's not the right one. I ain't worried about that part. We'll expedite it. So, quest needed doing a for each loop on that, getting the quest completed. Okay, so I did get it backwards. So we don't need to do a for each loop on this one. We do a for each loop on the prerequisite. I don't know why I got rid of the completed. We do need that. All right, so we're getting the data table for the information of the quest. We're breaking it open to see if there's a prerequisite and for each prerequisite, which if it's at zero, the other one I had the length and everything to check first, but if it's at zero, it just won't do it. So it'll be fine. But we're checking each prerequisite quest to see if the completed quest contains that array element. Now I'm going to add a branch. And 
if it has a prerequisite and the completed quest doesn't contain that prerequisite, then we want to remove this item. So I'm going to grab way from over here, add a reroute node, way over here, reroute node again, grab out my quest list, not the save quest, but just the regular one, and I want to remove item. Does not contain, okay, does not contain it. Yeah, completed quest does not contain. Removing. Yeah, all right. Score one for my memory. It's not often I get one of those. All right. So let's line these up, moving on down. All right, so once it's done with all that, Then I want to check to see what is it I want to check to see next. See, I don't I don't get those very often from my memory. Alright, so after we do that, we are going to cast to the player, get the completed, see if the quest list contains. Okay, alright. Alright, so after we do that, then we need to cast to the player one more time. You could probably just promote this to a variable and use it again. Right, you know what, I'm going to do that. Promote to variable. Player. Ref. That way we don't have to be casting, we can just get the info again. So I'm going to grab out that player reference. And I'm going to get the completed quests. And I'm going to do a for each loop on that. Get my quest list. And see if it contains a completed quest. Because if it does, then I want to remove it. So I'm going to add a branch. And if my completed quest contains... I did this one backwards too, didn't I? What the F -er. This oh, series again. Now for each of the completed, seeing if that contains. Yeah. Uh, That's right, right? It's quest list contains that. Yeah, okay. All right. Sorry about that. All right, so if it does contain, then I want to add a reroute node here. One more right here. And then I want to remove the item. So if it does, if my completed quest does contain something from the quest list, then I want to remove that quest from both my quest list and my saved quest. So I'll get, oh, no, nope. remove item. One more reroute node just to make it nice and pretty. Move it on back. And then that should be all we need to do. Now I'm going to add a couple print strings to test. Quest removed. Let's see, one more print string. This is a great way of, the reason I'm including this and not just cutting it out is just because this is a really good way of debugging code if it's just to make sure it's working the way you want it to. Uh, let's see, prereq not met. And 
and then right here I'm just going to get the length of this and then print that out. I'll print the string right here. Alright, and this is on begin play, so it should all print out just as it ooh, uh, comes up. So it's got two quests. Those two quests. Alright. So now, let's make one of them need a prerequisite. So I'm going to set quest 2 to have one prerequisite, and it's going to be quest 1. So just a full screen so we can see in the top left. One quest because the prerequisite was not met. And if I go look, then all I can do is quest 1. Alright, but now if you try to complete that quest, it's, it's not going to do anything. So we need a way of telling it, A, check everything again and see. So back in the quest giver blueprint, I'm going to add a custom event called recheck. And before you go into all this, we want to get our quest or no, set our quest list back to our saved quests. Now we don't have any issue with this because we're saying if we've already completed it then it's removing it from both that and the save quest. The only one time we're not removing it is if they haven't met the prerequisite. So we'll do that real quick. And over here on the event interact where we're closing the menu, let's get all actors of class because if you have multiple um, you know, quest givers, then you want them all to double check and see if they had any prerequisites or if they have any new. Alright, so and then I'm going to do a for each loop. And for each of them, we just want to run that recheck. So I'm going to add another quest giver. Now, this one is just going to have quest 1, and this one will just have quest 2. Now we don't have any real way of visually seeing this, but yeah, so the one has a quest and the other one does not, so if I talk to her, nothing. And then it runs my check again. Let's see, let me try. So if I turn this quest in, then yeah, the quest is, uh, you know, it's being progress locked, which is what we want. So now what we want to do is get that nifty little exclamation point over the head of the character. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to go into the components tab and I'm going to add a text render. And it's just going to be brought up, up top, over top of her head. I'm just going to default it to an exclamation point. Um, horizontal alignment center, so it's right above their head. And then we can, you can scale it to whatever you like. I'm going to make it nice and, nice and big, make it visible. Just like that. And then for the text render color, go World of Warcraft style, make it nice, nice golden color. So, now back in the event graph, if they don't have any quests, then we don't want them to do this. So right here at the very end, I'm just going to delete the print string, but I'm going to keep the quest list and the length. Because every time we check, we want to see if the length of this quest is greater than zero. And if true, so if it is, then we want to set, we want to get our text render, set the text inside of it, set, oh, set text, set text, there it is. So that one was, let's see, down under text render, set text right there. Now this, 
I'm going to drag off and promote to a variable called value delete grab out that new variable and I'm going to set it and I'm just gonna set it to an exclamation point and then plug that just like that and then we can set its visibility to true because we're gonna default it to false. Well, I guess we don't have to default it to false but either way if it's not if their quest length isn't then we want to basically just copy this paste it hook up the text render to it and set the visibility to false just like that so now the one on the left has a quest for me the one on the right does not Oop. so questing complete let's go take a look see complete the quest and now you've got a quest for me hey what's your quest for me hey all right now in the next one we'll set up the the way it changes from an exclamation point to a question mark and then we'll continue from there so I will see y'all in the next one